You're releasing her? What happened? What did you find out? The tests on your house ruled out any environmental allergens. Yeah, but what caused this? We believe it's highly unlikely that this set of circumstances will repeat itself. What set of circumstances? It's good news. She's healthy, but you might want to talk. Never. Get Getting the uppy. No murmurs, no friction rubs. What are you waiting for? Quiet. She's coughing up white sputum. <coughs> Cracking two thirds on the way up. Look at her neck. Please, she is vomiting. Would you give her the shot? It's not an allergy, it's her heart. What's the good news? What's the bad news? Congestive heart failure is which? Good news. Why? I don't know, it just sounded like you. New puzzle piece, always good news. What's the bad news? We've got two puzzle pieces from two different puzzles. Seems that way. What if her anaphylaxis wasn't anaphylaxis? Toxicity from the anti-rejection meds could cause a seizure and then heart failure. And get cured by a mommy-wielded EpiPen, it's anaphylaxis. What else? What if they really are two puzzles? You think she had two unrelated rare conditions in one week? We explained the anaphylaxis. I mean, we, I did. At least I thought I did, maybe I didn't. Still, it was all me. And heart problems aren't so rare for someone who's had a heart transplant. I say we assume House was right about the anaphylaxis. It is tempting. Heart failure could be either infection, coronary disease, or rejection. Sorry. There's a reason they call it the whiteboard. It's not my rule. What ties both these conditions together? Okay, we can all stare at each other, or we can investigate what caused the heart failure. Just the heart failure. You want to give me that black marker? It's no fever, so it's probably not infection. Or oh, no fever, because she's been on immunosuppressants for the last six months. Let's do a CT, get a heart biopsy, and uh, redo the double. Anything? Not yet. So I hear you don't want teenagers having sex. Teen suicide rate isn't high enough for you already? I just think those two are brats. Girl undercuts her mother any chance she gets. Yeah, it's the daughter's fault. It has nothing to do with mom infantilizing her. Good point. Explains why parents who don't pay attention get such nice, well-adjusted children. <laughs> What's this? Think it's vegetation? Yeah. The kind made of muscle that opens your heart valves. It's nothing. It's just clean. It's good news. You don't show any signs of coronary artery disease. So what's next? Well, blood work to rule out infection, and then a heart surgical biopsy to rule out rejection. But you don't think you're going to rule out both things, do you? No. I'm going to lose this heart, right? Hopefully, we'll find the problem and fix it. You'll keep your heart a long time. How long? There could be drug breakthroughs that allow you to keep it for decades more. Yeah, that's the answer my cardiologist always gives me. I looked it up on the web. It's like five or 10 years, right? It's about the average. That's why I need to have a life. Why can't you convince my mom to let me go back to school? Melinda, you've got bigger worries right now than missing school. Until we figure out what's wrong with your heart, the safest place for you to be is right here. Biopsy was negative for rejection. Oh, thank God. And what about the blood test? Showed no infection. So we still don't know what caused her heart failure. Let's just be happy she doesn't need a new heart. This is part act. It could have just been a one-time thing. So she has an allergic reaction and heart failure, and neither of them can be explained. Are they doing any more tests on her? No. She's not here. Notify local hospitals, cap companies, the state troopers, and local cops. Any security officers off duty or back on duty. We're on it. And I'm gonna need some pictures. And go through those drawers. And I want at least two people going over the surveillance tapes. That work. Are those all her clothes? Uh, yeah. She's obviously still in the building. So where did she go? What does she want? See her boyfriend? 
She didn't take her phone. She wants to be outside. Trying to scare your parents. Great job. Can we go back now? I hate her. When I was eight years old, I was sick. Well, not really sick, but the point is, my mom, she could She was like this before. Home by nine every night. Can't go out on the weekends, can't do sports. <laughs> Transplant just gave her what she always wanted. And uh, you had heart failure. This is kind of an insane time to be criticizing your mom about being overprotected. I know. I mean, this is what makes it even worse. All of, all of her craziness, it just... It makes sense now. Everything's gonna be all right. I didn't even try to get outside. It's too scary. Come on. Please walk back towards me. Why? Please. It feels kind of weird. It's called steppage gate. Is it serious? No, not necessarily. All right, stick your leg out, hold it up. She was under anesthesia for the biopsy if she lost oxygen. CT ruled out brain damage. Put your leg down. Relax. Why is her leg twitching like that? Fasciculation. Is that serious? It's paralysis and it's ascending. She's gonna lose the use of her legs? To start with. It's ascending fast. I hardly extend her leg now. That's right, it'll be up to her lungs in a matter of days. So, anaphylaxis, heart failure, paralysis. We couldn't put the first two together. I'm guessing we can't put all three together. Tick paralysis? Could also explain the anaphylaxis, maybe even the- Penicillin allergy explains the allergic reaction much better. Particularly because tick paralysis is usually accompanied by a tick. We did two comprehensive physicals, looking for insect bites. Can we put any two of those together? How about we stipulate? You argue that there must be something to connect all three symptoms. You mocked us for not figuring it out. And finally, you let us discuss the paralysis on its own because it's what's going to kill her. Now, it's ascending. Her MRIs are clean, so rule out stroke or aneurysm. ALS, MS. Progression's too quick. Spinal lesion from leukemia? Too slow. It's most likely Guillain-Barre. She's immunosuppressed. What about botulism? Not unless she's been walking on her hands the last couple of days. Botulism paralysis is descending, not ascending. Could be a virus. West Nile, even polio with her immune system shot. Get an LP and do PCRs for the viruses. And get an EMG to check for Guillain-Barre. Foreman's right, we gotta find out why she's paralyzed. But not before staring at me dumbly for a few seconds. We ran more tests on your daughter. Took a lumbar puncture, got some spinal fluid. Then we brought it to the lab to look for infections that could be affecting her brain. We also did an EMG to check how our muscles and nerves are responding to electrical impulses. Unfortunately, her muscles are showing increased weakness above the knee. You mean she's getting worse? The LP and PCR has ruled out polio in West Nile. We think it's Guillain-Barre. The body's immune response goes haywire, starts attacking the peripheral nerves. It causes muscle weakness and paralysis. How bad is it? It's serious. Guillain-Barre usually responds very well to plasmapheresis. You see, the plasma, the clear liquid part of her blood, contains most of the antibodies which are overreacting and attacking her nervous system. The machine spins her blood in a centrifuge and separates parts of the blood based on weight. White blood cells are the heaviest, then the red cells, then platelets and plasma. 
We discard the stuff that's causing all the trouble and return the good blood cells back to our body in a replacement fluid. If it works, we'll see results in a couple of days.